Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to this channel. Uh, as you know, I share experiences about many researchers from different parts of Europe, uh, about masters, PhD, living in Europe. So today I have with me Krupali. Uh, she actually recently finished her PhD in France. So in this uh, video, I'll be discussing uh, with her, her experience about how she applied for a PhD in France in CNRS from India directly, and what has her experience, whole experience throughout the PhD. So maybe Krupali, we can start with. Uh... Uh, your a short intro about you, like where are you from? Okay, uh, first, hello, Sambit. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me for your YouTube channel uh, interview. My name is Krupali Donda and I belong from India, western part of India, and more specifically, I'm from Gandhinagar, Gujarat. And uh, yes, I did my bachelor's and master's in electronics and communication uh, engineering from the State University of Gujarat. My master thesis is from ITER India Institute for Plasma Research Center, where I work on designing of the oversized microwave uh, devices for the diagnostic groups. After finishing my master's, I joined Indian Institute of Technology as a research fellow, where I worked for DST sponsored project to design the electromagnetic meta surface for the visible wavelength range. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can go and also check her LinkedIn profile if you want to know details about her background, what was her background before she applied for a PhD, very inspirational. And also one point I want to add before we proceed with the discussion is that uh, Krupali has a YouTube channel where she also shared her experiences about living in France. And yeah, so uh, can you tell like uh, why you chose to do a PhD in France? What was the reason? Honestly speaking, uh, France was not my first choice when I started applying, but yes, I was sure that I want to do PhD from either Europe or from UK because I like that quality of the life and the work balance. So I start applying for universities in UK, universities and laboratories in Germany and France. And meanwhile, uh, from several interviews uh, and all uh, application shortlisting and everything, I got position in France. Uh, that was, I got two positions in CNRS, one in Nancy, which is in the northern France, or in the Marseille, which is the south France. But as I got this position first uh, in Nancy, that's why I choose this CNRS France. What was your experience of the whole application process? Like, how did you apply? How did you come to know about this position that you are uh, currently, you, you finished your PhD in France? So what was your experience? And also maybe you can add to that, like after the application, how was the interview and everything else? So uh, I started applying for PhD abroad when I was in IIT Gandhinagar. So first I was looking for positions in UK only and I could successfully get admission in University of Bristol and University of uh, Leicester. But uh, after uh, my experience, I come to know that UK government is not giving the funding for the international students and you have to support your application and your candidature but then uh, it was not okay for me because i wanted to do my phd with salary or with the scholarships so then i start applying for germany and france and i think also for italy and how I was doing first, I was looking for the PhD position just by searching the keywords in Google. And then I came to know, okay, uh, from that, I get the links for LinkedIn or findphd.com like that. For this specific position in which I did my PhD was from LinkedIn. 
yeah so you can also try to search from linkedin but if you will find on the google then you will automatically get that link for linkedin also for the phd and also the another way is to apply is you can directly write to professor because sometimes even google don't show the positions or uh, it's i mean it is not visible to you so it's good always better to write down to the professors who are working in the field of your interest so yeah once i got the position uh, then the professor i applied uh, through the linkedin and then professor contacted that okay i shortlisted six candidates for this project so i am just uh, doing with the uh, interview process so in first round uh, he asked some fundamental questions about the meta surface design because i was already working for the electromagnetic meta surface along with this he also asked me some non technical stuff like where are you from and where are you studying why you choose that city and on the second screen also he was searching the information about my region and all i think the purpose here is that he wants to know how i communicate and to know more a bit more about me so first round was a bit fundamental and this also to know more about myself and then he shortlist two candidates and he asked us to present our the research work current research work so i prepared the presentation a brief presentation of about 10 to 15 minutes about my current research work in iit gandhinagar and at that time there were three professors from the same group so after just presentation they asked me several questions and all and my motivation to the, join their group and also the important question was that how i can add some value in that in their group so yeah uh, that's how they conduct the interview and i was selected for that position and and also you finished your phd recently i yes then i i finished also okay uh, so can you like say very briefly like just approximate like what is the average salary that someone can expect when they uh, work as a phd in france yeah so everyone knows uh, that uh, the taxes and social security is quite high in france so after if you deduct the these two things social security and taxes average uh, salary a phd student get in france is around 1500 euros which is more than enough to live a quality high quality of life yes yeah 1500 euros per month yeah after social security and all yeah okay uh yeah so how is the phd atmosphere according to you like for example the opportunities to network grow as a researcher maybe attend conferences summer schools so what was your experience what did you do and what did you like about or what was your experience okay so i think even in if you say about france it depends or varies according to the group right according to the project director from my doctoral school it was compulsory for us uh, to present our work in two international conference to apply for the phd defense so uh, our professor allowed us to attend the two conferences but not more than two but okay that was one part but he was very supportive for the collaborations collaborative works and also if you have time then you can attend the summer school that was okay for him but not at the cost of your own research work but he was very supportive for the collaborations and i worked with some universities in usa and china for that that was good experience okay uh, so maybe now we can go to the main part which many people might be interested in so whatever i understood from her linkedin profile and the discussion is that her phd is broadly in applied physics and then she looks at specific part in acoustics but maybe it will be good to give her the turn like can you please briefly tell something about the topic like what was your research in your phd my phd was in applied physics but more specifically in the acoustics domain 
I was working on designing of the acoustic meta surface for low frequency noise control. This project was uh, funded by United States Air Force Office. And the main aim of this uh, project was to conceive and design various kind of meta surface absorbers to achieve the ex extreme low frequency limits. It's like below 100 Hertz. Yeah, so I will put the video link there so that you can watch her presentation. Uh, yeah, so this question might sound very trivial, but this is very important when you do a PhD in any European country is that uh, how was your PhD like? Uh, I'm saying this coming from the Netherlands because in Netherlands, PhDs, like the funding that comes for the PhD, even if it is a job, can be from industry. Like both are maybe can be the partners like industry or university. Sometimes you have an industrial partner which contributes more for the funding and the, you do it in a university, but with the industrial partner. So what was your, like, how was your PhD? Was it like with the university or you also worked with industry and university? What was the nature of the PhD? So my PhD is from uh, Institute John Lemur, which is a laboratory under CNRS. Uh, CNRS is French government laboratory. And actually I was not working with the university. This was the government lab, but yes, for the degree, obviously the lab was connected with University of Lorraine. My project was funded uh, by the US Air Force, but it was not like, uh, we have some instruction or we have some collaborative work with uh, industry or EU, even US Air Force. It was just funded by uh, them. So it's like more about just laboratory, not industry or not the university. Okay, okay, I get the point. Did you get any additional responsibilities during your PhD or what can someone expect when they do a PhD, like something to teach or to supervise students? What was your experience? Okay. Officially, no. Officially, I don't have any responsibility a part of my own research work. But yes, time to time, you may get some responsibilities from your project directors. Like when someone uh, join your group, you have to give them technical trainings or trainings on what work you and your group are doing. So yes, sometimes it occupies a week, uh, some hours in a week or in a month. But officially, there was no responsibility like you have to teach the students and all it was optional if you want to teach the student you can teach they will pay more for them but it's not compulsory it's not responsibility okay okay i get the point like it's not part of your contract but if you teach you get additional money for it yeah, but and it was that it's compulsory to uh, know the french language if you want to uh, if you want ah, okay. to teach and you may okay. get some lectures in polytechnic and in the universities. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so this question is specifically my personal, I always like to ask this, even if not many people are interested in, but for example, here in the Netherlands, when we write a thesis, uh, we, in any Dutch university, the rule is that we have some publications or maybe something we make it ready. If not published, we send it to a journal. And normally we combine these publications as different chapters. And then at the end, we write a general introduction and general discussion and make it like a story, coherent story. And that's our PhD thesis. So in France, what's the process like how is the thesis written? Do you have any mandatory something to publish or how is the overall like uh, structure? Yeah, so for my doctoral school, it was compulsory to have two publications uh, in journal uh, to get the doctoral degree. But uh, for the thesis writing, yes, how I divided, I, I, for example, I had three publications. So first I uh, divided the chapter of uh, thesis for these three publications, then one for state of the art, and the last one is the overall conclusion. So yes, this, were, this was the outline, but then what we have to do, we have to tell the whole story because it's not the only 
uh, it's not the suddenly you get some idea, it strike and then you did that research and it was public. There are a lot of failed attempts. So you have to mention all of them. You have to start from very scratch, from where you have started, why you, uh, why it, it didn't work and how then you proceed for the further and how you get the final result. So yes, uh, moreover, it's like, same like you, you have to tell the whole coherent study, but the outline of thesis is decide, uh, decided by your publications and all. Okay, uh, I mean, to me, it sounds very similar, like the, because in our case, it, it varies, but in my particular university, the supervisors with whom I work, they had like uh, minimum three, I think, three publications and one, submitted to a specific place and in that they have criteria like suppose they choose like two journals one conference and that conference is like certain impact factor which is really good as good as a journal in our field uh, but not mandatory that all three needs to be in a journal which is not that easy uh, yeah so it sounds very similar but it's good to know like because i feel personally feel even if it's difficult but if you have at least one good publication then even more it's good but if you have at least one then it also enhances your quality of your work and thesis and everything and if we have publication that it will be easier for us to write the uh, right exactly write you can skip that writing part exactly exactly uh yeah so moving into some of the last few questions of this long interview uh, uh how is the phd supervision and your experience with the supervision team uh, did you feel did you find it helpful like when you have meetings with the supervisors how often did you meet uh, what was the format and structure what is your experience yes uh, i was fortunate enough to have a such uh, supportive team uh, we had two postdoctoral fellows and one was responsible to guide me when i joined and initially we had weekly meetings in which we discussed the work of, of the whole week. As I am from the another field from the electromagnetics and optics, it was quite difficult for me in initial days. And somehow also you have pressure that you have to finish your thesis in three years. So, but that time my postdoctoral fellows and two another Chinese ex exchange students helped me a lot even my professor also. So initially I, for six months, I was quite depended on them for ideas. But then as I st uh, start working on that field, I had my own ideas. And I think by the end of the first year, I get my first publication in applied physics letters. Then I had more confidence about my ideas and all, but yes, from the, since that part, I was quite independent, but they all were very supportive till the end. When I was writing my thesis, I find quite difficulties because uh, initially I was thinking thesis writing is very easy. It's not that stuff. But when I start uh, writing, even you have deadline pressures and all. So that time also they all helped me a lot. So yeah, it's overall good experience with them. Okay, okay, great to know. Uh, so what did you like and dislike about doing a PhD in France? Maybe also highlight some of the few challenges if you had any during your PhD. Honestly, no challenge. Uh, and honestly, there is nothing to dislike. It was overall 100% a very nice experience. See, uh, there was some challenges uh, during the pandemic, but it was same for everyone. In my case, I was lucky that my work was not 100% experimental. So when I was in the second year, uh, this pandemic start and we had to work from home. So I used to do the theoretical and numerical simulation work. That's why it didn't affect me that much. So that was the only channel to be a challenge to be habitual with that kind of work. Otherwise, overall, it was very nice. Okay. Uh, so what are the post PhD opportunities that you can find in France if you have any experience? And maybe at the end, you can say what is your plan after your PhD in France? 
see uh, Fran French government is quite supportive for the researchers for the international researchers and for my specific specific field there are a lot of groups which are working in the area of designing this kind of acoustic matter surface so you will find easily many positions for the postdoc in France and uh, so for now uh, there is no long term future plan but yes i am going to join the postdoc by the next month at university of southampton uk which is one of the biggest group working in the similar area it's quite overlap it's more than 95 percentage work uh, in which i am working so yes for now i want to do the postdoc and then maybe i can explore the more options okay so finally without further ado the final question like any advice or tips that you want to give for future aspirants who want to apply for phd in france from abroad i think specifically from india because that's the most of the audience comes from yeah so so uh, if you want to come to france to pursue your phd Uh, i think i have two three things to say uh, first that french administration is really very complex so so don't be frustrated if you have some problems because maybe you need all of your documents to be converted in french and there is not a smooth process it's all depends on your luck depends on the prefectures in which city, in which city you are working for so don't get frustrated it's like uh, same for everyone so this is about the french administra administration which takes long time to process your document yes but getting visa is very easy because once you are selected for the phd you will have conventional they queue from the laboratory or french government so it's the what they want so it's a visa is very easy and another thing if you want to come to france please learn a bit french or be open to adopt the different cultures because uh, france i think france is the most open country in the world and its culture is also vibrant so a part of uh, your research it's always good to mix in that culture and you will really enjoy your phd life too so try to lead, uh, know a bit more about its culture uh, and the yes about culture the people and a bit more about french language okay that that's some very nice advice thank you krupali for taking your time for this uh, discussion and i hope that you guys also like this uh, video you get some information share with your friends help each other out and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and also go check out krupali's channel i will leave it somewhere on the screen or maybe in the description below and uh, i'll also leave the contact details of krupali how you, if you want to contact her how you can contact so yeah uh, goodbye from netherlands and also from france or india wherever you are and uh, see you guys later till then peace